In the shadows of our souls lurks a concept both feared and misunderstood, the unforgivable sin. Picture this, a sin so profound that its weight echoes through eternity. To comprehend its gravity, we turn to biblical figures who, despite their heinous transgressions, found redemption. Yet there exists a sin that cannot be forgiven. For Hebrews 10.26 say, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. It delivers a warning indicating the profound gravity of this sin. The verse suggests that if an individual deliberately persists in sinning after having received the knowledge of the truth, a chilling consequence looms. Consider the story of Paul, once a proud murderer of Christians. His deliberate actions were forgiven upon genuine repentance. King David, despite heinous sins like murder, found mercy through tears of repentance. King Solomon, his son who turned away from God and worshipped other deities, was forgiven. The Israelites on numerous occasions doubted but turned back to God and were always forgiven. And Peter, who denied Jesus, wept in remorse and was reconciled. But what is this sin Jesus spoke of? To unravel this mystery, let's delve into the heart of the matter, the intentional, willful rejection of God. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. Mark 3, 28, 29. We fear that we have committed sins and it is too late for us because God will not forgive us. Violence, abuse, or the breaking of sacred bonds through divorce. It's crucial to dispel these common misconceptions, assuring you that the profound depth of God's mercy extends to the darkest corners of our transgressions. See these verses from the Bible to give us more understanding. Micah 7.18, NIV. Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy, still need assurance. Isaiah 1.18 NIV Come now, let us settle the matter. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. More? Okay, Psalm 103.12 NIV As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Let's be unequivocal. No sin, whether of the flesh, heart, or mind, is beyond the reach of God's forgiveness. His mercy surpasses our deepest fears, offering redemption to the truly repentant soul. Understand that the gravity of your past actions does not eclipse the vastness of God's love, which eclipses the darkness of even the most profound sins. Hold on to this truth as we proceed, for it is the key to unlocking the boundless mercy God offers to every repentant heart. In the labyrinth of our fears, stories of hope emerge like beacons in the night. Picture the prodigal son, a poignant tale of a wayward child's return to a forgiving father. This parable transcends time, resonating with the eternal truth that God's love and mercy await those who earnestly turn their hearts back to him. Despite the weight of our sins, there exists a path to redemption, illuminated by the unwavering light of God's mercy. The prodigal son's father, embodying divine forgiveness, doesn't meet the wayward child with judgment, but with open arms of acceptance and love. This narrative serves as a timeless reminder that, no matter how far we've strayed, God eagerly awaits our return, ready to embrace us with a love that knows no bounds. In our own lives, we can find solace in the fact that God's mercy is not a distant concept, but a living, breathing reality. As we navigate this journey, let the prodigal son's story be a source of inspiration and encouragement, reminding us that even in our lowest moments, there is always a path leading back to the loving arms of our Heavenly Father. As we delve deeper into the sacred teachings, we encounter a concept that pierces the soul, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. To understand this, we must turn to the profound words of Jesus and the incident that prompted them. Picture a scene where Jesus, in the midst of performing miracles, is confronted by the Pharisees. Witnessing the undeniable power of the Holy Spirit at work, they choose not humility, but arrogance. In Matthew 12, 22, 32, we find Jesus casting out demons, healing the blind and mute. Astonished crowds wonder if this is the long-awaited Messiah. Yet the Pharisees, instead of acknowledging the divine, attribute Jesus' miracles to the power of darkness. Matthew 12, 24. But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, 
It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. In response, Jesus unveils the gravity of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It's not a fleeting doubt or a momentary lapse in faith. It's a deliberate, willful rejection of the divine, even in the face of undeniable evidence. This rejection, born from a hardened heart and a closed spirit, stands as an obstacle to the very forgiveness and redemption Christ came to offer. The confrontation Jesus had with the chief priest and the elders, on whose authority he was using to perform his miracles in Matthew 21, 23, 27, that whole event can tell us the chief priests and Pharisees truly knew who Jesus was, whose authority he was sent. Matthew 21, 25, and 26, John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, for they all hold that John was a prophet. Understanding this incident provides a key to unraveling the severity of this sin. It is a rejection not just of Jesus' ministry, but a denial of the very source of his power, the Holy Spirit. To willfully attribute the divine work of the Spirit to evil is to close one's heart to the very essence of God's redemptive grace. As we navigate through these teachings, let us ponder the implications of rejecting the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. The incident that led to Jesus' proclamation serves as a cautionary tale, urging us to approach the divine with humility, openness, and a heart receptive to the transformative power of God's Spirit. Repentance, a powerful force capable of dispelling the darkest shadows, becomes our guiding light. Consider the journey of King David, a man who, despite committing grave sins, found favor in the eyes of God. David's secret lay not in his flawless character, but in his genuine repentance. Unlike King Saul, who when confronted with his sins, offered excuses and rationalizations, David's heart broke with remorse. The Psalms bear witness to his contrite spirit. In Psalm 51, we see a plea for mercy and a desire for a clean heart, a repentant cry that resonates through the ages. This contrast between David and Saul illustrates a profound truth. God favors the sincerely repentant heart. David's repentance was not a mere show. It was a heartfelt turning towards God, acknowledging his shortcomings and seeking divine mercy. Jonah, who disobeyed God completely after instructed to go to Nineveh and refused, he repented and was forgiven. Or is it Peter, the prodigal son and the city of Nineveh were all forgiven? As we reflect on this, let it be a beacon of assurance. Divine mercy is not reserved for the perfect, but for the genuinely repentant soul. In the dawn after our darkest nights, it is repentance that opens the door to God's boundless mercy, welcoming us back into his loving embrace. The journey through these sacred pages is not merely a recounting of ancient tales, it's a map guiding us through the intricacies of our lives. As we absorb the wisdom embedded in these narratives, the question arises, how do we translate these timeless truths into our daily existence? Consider the principles laid out in the scriptures as a compass pointing us toward righteous living. The stories of repentance, mercy, and the consequences of intentional rejection are not relics of a bygone era, but living lessons applicable to our modern struggles. Let these narratives inspire self-reflection and a sincere examination of our own hearts. Are there areas where we've willfully turned away from God? Are we open to the transformative power of repentance? The journey from pages to lives is an invitation to align our actions with the profound wisdom found in the scriptures, fostering a deep connection with the divine that shapes our character, decisions, and relationships. As we navigate our individual paths, may the teachings become a living reality, guiding us toward a life reflective of God's mercy and grace. The truth remains steadfast. The gravity of intentional rejection, the hope of repentance, and the boundless mercy of our Heavenly Father. As we conclude this journey, let the revelations of the unforgivable sin and the pathway to redemption resonate in your hearts. If this journey has touched your heart, share it with others. Like, subscribe, and join us in exploring more profound biblical insights on our website. God's grace is more than sufficient to transform even the darkest corners of our lives. May you find peace in his boundless love. Amen.